G'day and welcome to Adana Dian. Today is Monday, the 6th of October 2014. This is episode number 79 of Adana Dian, and yes, I've been missing. Anyway, I'm your host, Fiona, also known as Fifi Kins. Um, if you find someone on the intertubes called Fifi Kins, it's probably me. I'm also the dyer behind Solar Flare Fighters. The last podcast I recorded was in the 20th of August was published on the 20th of August I haven't actually looked at it to see that was probably when I recorded it um, so it has been a while and there have been several reasons for that um, I'll start at the beginning I think um, soon after the 20th of August I got a phone call from the federal senator who's based here in town and she said that she had a position going in her office for one day a week would I be interested and I said yes. <laughs> so since around that time I've been working one day a week um, in the Federal Senator's office. I've been doing a bit of policy, a bit of um, electoral office work, so dealing with constituents um, and just um, also helping out um, doing a bit of, um, I suppose, campaign research. So that happened and it's ideal. Um, she said that it might build up to two days a week if that's okay with me and that would be absolutely perfect. Anyway, so then four weeks ago um, I had a phone call on a Monday morning from a friend and former colleague who said, hey, so-and-so is in hospital. It looks like he's got blood poisoning, um, septicemia, He's not making much sense. I can't get anything out of him. His wife doesn't really know what's happening. Can you call up on behalf of all of us, visit him at the hospital? And I said, yeah, not a problem. So I went up there and saw him and he was pretty high on all sorts of different drugs and his arm was really swollen. He said he'd got a little cut on his elbow and that had allowed an infection in and at that stage he was going off to have another operation. He'd had a couple of opera one operation already. Since then he's had three operations. Um, and he said, yeah, no, he says, I, I don't think I'll be... He says, next, next week, um, the other colleague who'd rung me, she was off on leave. And he said, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be at work next week. I don't know what they're going to do. And that is in a state electorate office. So here we have federal and then we have state. And I said, ah, and I didn't think very much of it until I got a phone call from um, the other lady in the office and said, I've spoken to the member and we were wondering, would you be able to come in next week or week to staff the office? And I said, okay, I thought a week of temping, I can cope with that. And it's probably about 20, 25 minutes south of here. And I thought, yeah, not a problem. Um, and really, really enjoyed it. I'd arranged with the federal senator. I did two days in one week instead of doing that. So it was all working out. So the week leading up to that was busy because I did two days. So I did the week down there and thought that's good. Um, enjoyed it. Apparently I did a good job. Um, and it was the dealing with, mainly dealing with constituents and helping them out with their issues. So um, things are divided here. We have local politics, state politics and federal politics. And state politicians generally deal with health, education, housing, um, child services, and a few little other things. Um, so there's a lot of things that people have issues with that they'd like help with. So often it is with regards to public housing, people who've been on the public housing waiting list, people who don't have anywhere to live at the moment. and. I really found that I was in, I enjoyed it. Anyway, so that week was up. Following Monday, I get a phone call from the office again when she's back from her leave and she goes, oh, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much. You were able to file things and put things in the right category and because you knew what you were doing, um, blah, blah, blah. The other colleague, he's not going to be back for at least another three weeks. Are you able to come in and help? And I said, originally I said, Yes, I will. I can do three days a week because then I've got the one day with the federal senator and then it'll give me one day off. And she goes, oh, I don't think the member's going to be happy with that. I'll, I'll have to. And I said, okay, look, I'll do the four days because I've got to do this one day um, for the federal senator. And she goes, no, look, that's fine. We understand that. That's fine. That should be fine. So I've now done 
three weeks. This has been my fourth week this week. Today's actually a public holiday, so I'll get onto that in a minute. So um, I've done three weeks there. Um, this will be my fourth week. Hopefully he's back next week um, from his sick leave, although last week he said he's still sleeping 16 hours a day. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to get back to work next week full time or not, so I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, yes, I've been enjoying it, but it's taken an awful toll on things. Leading up to that, I'd had some busy weekends um, just doing things in volunteer organisations I'm involved with and, and things like that. And I have found that my mental health has deteriorated. So whilst I've been working full time and able to function, because it takes so much effort to get into the 9 to 5 rigmarole or the 8.30 to 4.30 as it has been, um, to get into that, um, to have a wardrobe presentable, to try and do that, I get home and I collapse. Um, and I, I haven't worked in an office environment full time now for almost two years. So it has been a huge adjustment and my mental health has suffered. Um, so much so that just having to focus on that um, and do a good job of that has meant that I've been an absolute failure with regards to knitting and with regards to the business. And that really upsets me. Um, I finally got some orders together this weekend. The final, I think most of the orders. Um, there's one package I think that's gone missing. I've got to contact that person again and that one's um, half died up again. But I, I can't do any dyeing during the week. And on the weekends and I'm trying to catch up with things that I haven't been able to catch up with during the week. So it's been it's been a challenge. Um, Mill's been fantastic through this, the amazing man in my life. He has been exceptionally encouraging. And I will admit, getting a paycheck has been amazing. I've been able to do things that I haven't done for, for ages. Um, and, and it's just little things, like I was able to order a new skirt, um, get a new pair of shoes. I've been able to organise the kids' passports. I little things that I suppose you would almost take for granted um, when when you're working and got a regular income that I've just been able to do for the last couple of weeks which has been really really good I meant to be having a haircut but again fitting things in you know when you're in an office um, during the week it's hard to fit things in so I'll have a haircut my hair is like this because today it was public holiday today and um, I hired a skip for the weekend a big rubbish skip and thinking that would take all day to fill up yesterday it actually took an hour and a half on Saturday afternoon because I had so much to put in there and I could have had a huge bigger one twice the size and still filled it anyway so that's that um today um a couple of friends and Jasper and Mimel and I went out to Crystal Cascades if you watched my anniversary episode um where I showed modeled the swans that's where I was then we went out there and went further up and went swimming it was freezing it was fantastic because it's been heating up again here our day temperatures are about 30 degrees and it was just beautiful and peaceful and tranquil and I now get to, I came home though and napped for 45 minutes um, and it's now five o'clock on a Monday of a long weekend and I haven't knitted a stitch probably I don't think since Wednesday last week and part of that now is also I suppose adding to my anxiety, um, but at the same time no, not helping alleviate it because I know that when I'm in a regular pattern, when I'm knitting, knitting, when I'm spinning, it actually helps my mental health. And I went and saw a dietitian for the first time on Saturday um, because I've been doing okay with some weight loss, but I wanted some further tips. And I, I said to her, look, I know what I've got to do. I've got to eat less and move more. That's fine. I know the theory behind it, but it's the mental preparation. So we're doing a lot of mental stuff. So of all things, going to a dietitian to do a whole lot of um, a lot of CBT, which I've done a lot of before, cognitive behavioural therapy, um, but also working out why and why I sabotage myself. And she said that I need to find half an hour each day to do something for me. 
And she said, I don't know if that's for you is going to be reading a book or if that's going to be watching a TV series. Said, that's probably actually going to be knitting or spinning. And she goes, excellent. She said, you've got the outlets. You've got them there. She said, you just need to use them again. And yeah, so this week is going to be a challenge. That was on Saturday and I haven't eaten anything since then because I've been so busy. Just with stuff that I've been trying to get done. Um, the other thing I did, I discovered Outlander. I have read the first three books. I'm into the fourth book. Um, I've been watching the series on television and really, really enjoying it. And I haven't got into a book series like this for ages. I used to read a lot and I found that I haven't been reading. And I've been enjoying the reading. I've been enjoying getting into bed at night and reading a chapter or two or three or four sometimes. Um, and that, that has been good. But again, I can read and knit at the same time, but I haven't been. And it's... Anyway, it is what it is. I'm here now and I'm hopefully going to put out a bit of an update today. Just back to the shop. I'm not going to have a shop update this week. Um, it's. I did think about spending this weekend getting stuff together and doing an update for today or tomorrow. And then I thought, I, I, don't, I know that I'm not going to be able to come home from the office and get orders together to get them out. Um, some of the orders that have come through whilst I've been working... I've now got together this weekend and it's like I don't I can't operate like this I can't do this so I apologize um, yeah it is what it is all the things you know this too shall part everything else um, but today I also really wanted to get an episode out um, it is mental health week here in Australia and mental illness affects one in three Australians and I'm one of them. Um, I have generalised anxiety disorder. I've had that for many years. Um, usually it's managed pretty well. I have done a lot of work on that. I've done courses. I've done all sorts of stuff. But sometimes I get blindsided, like has happened. And I think part of it is also admitting it. Um, and with the anxiety then comes depression. So... I think I mentioned last time, um, last episode, one of the things that's been happening has been the kids' dad wanted mediation. That actually is now behind us. So that is good that that happened. Um, but for me, it built up all sorts of feelings and emotions and what-if thoughts that weren't necessarily there and ended up, for me, I, I didn't necessarily want to do the mediation, but for me, I got out of it exactly what I wanted. So that's fantastic. Um, and hopefully that will make things smoother now with the holiday times with the kids. But anyway, enough about that. I've just blabbered on for 13 minutes and I do apologise. Um, and this is take four or five because I kept, I think I've forgotten how to do things. Anyway, thank you to the people who've contacted me. I owe a lot of messages. I've got a lot of unread messages on Ravelry and emails um, and even Facebook messages that I just haven't got to yet. I am just blown away by the number of people who have contacted me and said, we haven't seen an episode for so long, are you okay? Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I hope to record again next weekend so that I can have an update on Monday or Tuesday next week. I do have some stuff tied up, but I'm not going to put it up in the shop just yet. So, on to the knitting and spinning and stuff. Where shall I start? Excuse me, I'm just going to grab a drink. I have a finished object. I finished my cool clavicle cover. Um, this, it's actually been finished for a little bit. And it hasn't been blocked very well because I couldn't find my blocking wires. And it was too hard to block with pins because I actually wanted straight lines. I didn't want any points or anything. It is a really lovely size. I used from memory about 420 yards called for 400 um but yeah <coughs> pardon me i think <coughs> pardon me i think with a nice pin it would just be beautiful to drape over the shoulders this is this is now what is it I'm sorry, I am just having to go back and work it out. 
it's Mosley Park. Mosley Park Gardener. I used 431.5 yards. The colourway is Tosca and as you can see it has beautiful spots of yellow and pink and purple through it. Um, and it was a really, really good yarn for this pattern. The only thing about the pattern are the chain rows. There are these chain rows that happen in between sections. So in here and then down the bottom. And they took me a long time, probably because I was knitting on a blunt needle. So I ended up having an extra needle in my hand to pass stitches over. But really, really fantastic pattern. It's, it's the Cool Clavicle Cover by Megan Williams. And it's designed to sit over your shoulders over a summer dress. And I think it'll be perfect for that. So there's that. Um, I had intended to give it away in a swap package, but then I'd reread my partner's questionnaire and I thought, I don't think it's the most ideal thing for my swap package. And then I get to keep it. So that's really quite nice. I'm quite pleased with it. So I really am happy with this. And I, yes, I would definitely knit this again because, as I say, it is a fantastic pattern for variegated yarn. So there's that. Works in progress. I have, I think I've got three that I wanted to show you. And, you know, there's been, I don't know how much progress or what's been happening. So I have... I've even forgotten the names of half these patterns. How's that? I have my tubularity. Now tubularity is a Martina Bem pattern. For those who've been watching for a while, I, when I was at the Zombie Knit Apocalypse, I collected all the Zombie Knit Apocalypse colorways this year with a couple of other people and we divided them up. So I have been using those colorways for this pattern. So I started with Marigold Gen in the Undead Winifred colourway, went into the Dancing Dog Dye Works in, I think it's Zombie Party in Rochester, well that might be another one, I can't remember, anyway, um, that one there, that is, I feel a an attack of the dumb blondes coming on by 716 Knits, and I'm now up the top here into the, which one's this one, this is Cyborg's Craft Room, and I can't quite remember the name of this one either but again really enjoying it and I've probably done about an inch on that so that is that um, that's the one I'm working on at the moment I haven't actually worked on this for a while um, I have modified this slightly from the pattern because I did my original um, piece you do the original piece there I increased that by a couple of inches partially because I have eight colors instead of the seven colors so I didn't mind doing um, a bit wider so that I could perhaps have a little bit less in the um, length of them and I think that's going to be working well and also because I've got quite a big noggin big head um, and I wanted it to get over there so that is that um, I think once I finish this colourway, I'll be halfway through. This is a long-term project. It's been sitting in my handbag and actually hasn't seen much love because I have some socks that I cast on. So that is in my Girl Cave bag that I got at the Nipocalypse this year. There we are. Um, and I just love my Girl Cave bags and, of course, I love my elephants. So... My socks, which are in my kitchen counter crafter bag by the amazing Java Jenny. These are the vanilla bean sock pattern. I actually haven't done as much as I thought I'd done, so I really need to get onto these. And I've got some drop stitches here because I do this every time. I put them on the needles and put them in there instead of putting them on the cable. Ooh, where are we? I'll have to count these in a minute. Sorry, I just need to pick these up and work out where I'm at. So I can see that I'm actually changing colour. Anyway, um, so these are the vanilla bean sock, vanilla bean socks by Emily. Watch us watching Emily. Um, the yarn is 
by Clever Chukia. And I don't believe she's dying at the moment. I'm not sure if she's dying yet. The other thing, I am so behind on podcasts. I don't think I've watched a podcast in five or six weeks. Um, today I went through and marked a lot of them as watched because I just know that I'm not going to get there. So if there's anything I've missed, please let me know. Um, the only thing I have watched was Silly Freeze Update. So my heart goes out to her at the moment um, as she's going through her treatment. Anyway, these, this is a five colour stripe. So it's hard to tell on the monitor, but these two are actually different and these two are actually different. And then there's that beautiful sort of um, yellowy green in there as well. Really fantastic pattern and it's working well. Of course, I'm doing them two at a time, magic looping them. I have two balls of yarn and I made sure I started in the same place. So I will probably do still got my little koala in there. I will probably do a fish lips kiss heel on them. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to the heel because I need to get going with them and move on with those. The other thing I have been working is I cast working on is I cast on my boxy um, and this is not going to be finished for the knit along in the Aussie yarning group I know that or is that even over now it may even be over but hey, I've cast it on. Um, so this is the Boxy by Hokey Locatelli. And I am using the Ton of Wool Cormo in the beautiful grey. It's a four ply um, in the most uh, gorgeous grey. It's a natural colour in that it's blended the um, brown wool with the white. But it produce, it's produced, it's a brownie grey. And in the... Um, skein it probably looks a bit browner than it does here but it actually comes up as being quite great and I love it it is so soft and so beautiful to work with um, oh and it's just going to be beautiful so whilst our season has totally changed here and I probably won't be wearing knitwear um, the other thing that's probably happened in the last six weeks that you may not have heard about is Imogen's being given a scholarship to go to Japan um, for five weeks over Christmas as part of the Australia Japan Society representing Cairns in one of our sister cities which is really really exciting for her and my mum said to me well would you and Jasper like to go over um, for a week or so in Tokyo um, as your Christmas present and I sort of took thought about it for like well, you know half a second and said that would be fantastic so I'll probably get a bit, a bit of winter and I will need a jumper so hopefully that will be done by then it gives me something to work towards as well um, so nothing's been booked yet it may not even happen I don't know anyway that is all that I've really been working on and when I say working on it I don't feel I've done a lot Acquisitions wise, um, I think the stuff that I'm showing, I'm pretty sure I've probably had some things come through from um, Into the World and Island Handmaids, which are the two clubs I'm doing at the moment. Um, I have one from each of them to show you, but I think two have come through, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I have the September Into the World, which is on the rocks in English Shetland. So I'm not going to get it out of the bag, but it's greens and golds on that side and blues on that side. Blues and, yeah, sort of a dark grey, I suppose, as well. Um, it's English Shetland. I'm probably going to destash this. I've got to go through my fibre and work out what I'm going to destash because I have too much. I also have a um, delivery from Highland Handmade. This is from the beautiful postcards from Main Club. And this is Fort Knox. How about I hold it up the right way? And I just love the postcards that have been coming with this as well. Um, it, it's giving me an absolute... It's, it's really... It's fascinating to see um, somewhere that has all these seasons. Like, we don't really have seasons. The, and the different... Um, I suppose the different places you can visit around Maine. So it's a tourist thing as well. And this is called Stalwart, and it is beautiful. Look at that. Um, and this is beautiful greens and greys in the white ash worsted, which is 245 yards, and, yeah, 
it's a single ply yarn. It's either going to become a hat or probably even some mitts. Not sure on that one. Um, I'm not sure. Might even become a cow. The other thing I kind of ordered, um, the amazing Charlie from Ixchel Fibres and Yarns. which is ixelbunny.blogspot.com. Her updates, she does them through blog posts, um, puts it out on Facebook, puts it up on her blog post, and then sits by her computer while people email her. And she did an update where things beautifully presented as well. And I got something else that was so, love, so lovely, so beautifully presented, and I can't remember what it was. So if I do come across it this week, in time for next week, I'll let you know. Um, so she did an update of what she called her bunny bison bliss. And at the time I thought, oh, I'm not buying any more wool. But when this came through, it was bison. And bison isn't wool, wool, sheep's wool. So this is 15% bison, 10% angora, 10% baby camel, 5% camel, cashmere, 50% merino, and 10% tencel. So these are 50 gram um, braids. And she, when she had the colours up there, I when I... I've only ordered from her a few times online like this because I love catching up with her at Bendigo. And I said, look, I'd like A, B or C. And she got back to me and she goes, looks like you've got C. And I said, that's fine. Look, any of the colours you've got in there today, I'd be happy with them. I really would like two braids though because I'd prefer to spin 100 grams. And then she came back 15 minutes later and she goes, I'm all confused. She said, you've got A. And I said, that's great. So I have Pink Panther. And here it is. Oh, and it is just so soft and luscious. And you can see there the bits of tencel that are sort of around there. Just, where are we? There. Um, the, oh, yep, so I really am looking forward to spinning this. Um, that is the other one. So I got two of them. I got two of the same. I did think of getting one of each, but then I'm so glad I've got these. So not sure what they're going to become but I will two ply them and speaking of spinning I do have some spinning to share um, early September we have the Carnival on Collins um, which is the big festival in Cairns big street uh, market and the fiber crafters were there and I was there as well with the fiber crafters and so I was able to spend the whole day spinning and it was just amazing. I took some yarn along, wasn't expecting to sell any, didn't sell any. Um, had a couple of people talk to me about it though, which was good. So that, you know, things like that. Um, September in Kansas is a wrong time to be thinking about knitting for a lot of people. But, sorry, here's my bobbins. Still on bobbins because I haven't um, applied them yet. This is what I was working on originally. This is the Polworth by, who was it? Zazuela Fibers, I believe. And that, that, this was in the closed, we're closing shop um, update and it was all beautiful greens. I spun it all into one bobbin and I'm going to um, chain ply it. I got through that, I had over half of it to go and it was spinning, I mean it's fairly thin, you can see there how thin bits of it are. Um, and I got through that and it was, um, I got through spinning that probably just after lunch and I thought, I don't want to apply it. I didn't actually bring my Lazy Kate and I thought, mm, yes, I could get a stick and put it through there and get someone to hold it for me, but I just didn't didn't feel like applying it there. I would have preferred to rest it anyway. I did take with me another braid and I thought, I'll split this one down the middle. Now, this is Yarn versus Zombies. This is Corridale in the bushwalking colorway. There you go. You've got it. That is a fantastic representation of the colorway and this was absolutely to die for. I got through half of it and I knew I wanted to spin it a bit thicker and I, my original thought was I'll just two ply it um, and then I got through half of it and I was really enjoying it I didn't have another bobbin and I thought I've really only got three bobbins so I can't spin it onto the other bit because I've got to ply the other one and then I thought why not just spin it all onto one bobbin and I will chain ply this one as well so I've still got to chain ply this one my plan this evening is to get the wheel out and do some plying um, but this is just a really, really beautiful blend of colours. I tried to do this a bit thicker and with the chain ply, hopefully I'll get a bulky weight and that can become probably a hat. 
um, no idea what the pole width is going to become once it's chain plied. So I haven't actually done any spinning since this. I need to get these plied up. I think I still have four or five braids to spin for Spin the Bin for this year. And I did say at the start of the year if I hadn't finished spinning them, I was going to be giving them away. Um, I know... Let me just quickly bring that up because... Let me have a look and see exactly what I have left to go. So the bushworking is almost done. I've got a burnished bat. That one's done. I've got some Portuguese merino to spin. I've got the zombie bites. I was going to do on a spindle and I've got the skein in the bra. So I've only got one. Once this is finished, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's, that's totally doable. That's fantastic. And the zombie bites, I was going to spin on the um, spindle that I've got last year. I'm not even sure if I'm going to do that now. I might even substitute those. You can substitute with two more. Um, so if I take that one out, that would give me five more things to spin. What are we now? October, October, November, December, three months. That's doable. I will see. I might even, I might even do that. I don't know. Um, I know my yardage is down. I think I'm going to knit about half of much, half as much as what I knit last year. But I also have a lot of things to go. Um, in the last podcast, I talked about doing stripy uh, socks September or something, whatever I was talking about. That never eventuated. So um, I'm going to definitely do the gunner knit along in November and December. So the gunner knit along is, you know, in the start of the year when you say this is the year I'm going to actually do something where I'm going to stick something or this is the year I'm going to actually master um, stranded colour work or cables or I this is the year I'm going to knit five Christmas presents for my co-workers or I'm going to knit some charity beanies or I'm going to do something. You know, you have these grand plans at the start of the year well, the gun and it along is going to give people an opportunity to either finish up what they, something they've started um, or to do something. And for me, last year when I did it, I wanted to do some stranded colour work in a hat. I did that. So I was able to have that achievement. Um, I'm pretty sure my goals this year were to do with knitting socks and things. I've got to knit some more socks. Once these green socks are finished, it's Mimble's birthday in a couple of weeks and I usually give him socks. I still haven't finished his socks from last year. So I can finish that for him and then get some other socks on the needles for him um, because he does like his hand-knitted socks. He wears them to work every day, even in summer, because he says they just absorb the sweat and everything. Um, and I've got a whole lot of stuff that I want to get finished and get off the needle. So my gunner is going to be to get my cue down, uh, to get my works in progress down. Um, other people might be, they want to do some more work on blankets they've been working on, anything like that. So it's a pretty open knit along and that is what I'm going to use, the Kitchen Counter Crafter pouch. I don't have it with me, it's over in a tub over there. Um, that is going to be a prize in that. I think... I will hold off. Next week I will do the drawing for the um, third quarter use of solar flare fibres. If you've crafted anything with solar flare fibres over the last three months or so, or if you haven't entered it yet um, and you've crafted something, please go to the thread in the solar flare fibres group. Um, I think I'll close the September one, open the October, November, December one, but please enter it. I'll close the September one, but I'll draw it next week because I know this is getting on. Um, and once again, thank you everyone for being so understanding, for being so friendly and showing me such love um, that has meant a lot. And I've had so many messages come through, people who've given me patterns, um, it's totally out of the blue. It's just, it's, it's been some challenging weeks. Um, Ninja's here trying to say hello too. It's been some challenging weeks, but at the same time, it's it's also just the love that's been shown to me has been fantastic. So thank you all very, very, very much. I will record, um, if not next weekend, it'll be next Monday because I will have an update Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Probably Tuesday, I don't know when it will be. Um, it depends when I get around to recording. So until then, um, I've got a feeling there was something else I was meant to mention.
I can't remember what it was. Anyway, until then, I'm going to say uru, cheers, bye.